Just hours before the January 6th Select Committee held their fifth hearing today, members of the committee sat down with Alex Holder, a documentary filmmaker who was granted access to the former president, his family, and advisors in the weeks ahead of and days after January 6th. Roughly 11 hours of his footage was subpoenaed by the committee, and Holder is fully cooperating. Holder's docuseries will be released on Discovery Plus later this summer. And joining me now is Eric Holder. Alex Holder, sorry, documentary filmmaker and director of Unprecedented. There's another famous Holder uh, out in the world, but you are not he. Um, thank you for being here. L let's talk about Pleasure. this. Thank Cheers. You, you interviewed Trump and his family. Now, this was intended to be a, a, a series about the family, about their relationship, right? Not about the election, just to be clear. Well, I mean, I think it was always going to be about the election in that we started during the midst of the campaign. Mm -hmm. So the, the election was always going to be part of the, the story. Uh, I don't think it was ever meant to be part of... I mean, what happened during the election campaign wasn't necessarily anticipated. And you first interviewed Donald Trump himself in December. You interviewed him again in March and May. Characterize him, this is after he had lost the election, but while he was still engaged in what we now know was a plot to change that. What was his demeanor, and did you get the sense that he genuinely believed, because this is important to his motives here, that he had really won? So, I, I mean, he definitely believed that he had won. And, in fact, I actually had a debate with, uh, with Michael, our director of photography, about whether or not he truly believed in his own uh, sort of rhetoric, I guess. And I was of the opinion that he didn't, and actually it was all part of a, you know, sort of, a, I guess, a game in a sense. But after my first interview with him in the, in the White House, I was sort of astonished that I was totally wrong and that he absolutely does believe that he won the election, which was extraordinary. And you, we've seen, uh, you know, his daughter, Ivanka Trump, testified that she actually believed the opposite, that she believed um, the then attorney general when he said that Trump had not won. Did you get the sense that his family were encouraging him to continue to believe conspiracy theories rather than the truth? I'm not sure about whether or not his family encouraged him. I, I certainly believe that his, uh, at least the, the family members that I met and, and interviewed, uh, certainly echoed uh, the sort of similar views, if not very, almost identical views to uh, their father, uh, to him. So, which wasn't surprising, really. Let me play a clip. Uh, this is a new clip. This is one about the Georgia election from your film. Here it is. You can't have elections that are meaningless. You can't have elections that, if somebody controls the state of Georgia, because, you know, we have a governor that the poor guy doesn't know what the hell's happening, and he's lost control of the state. It's run by Stacey Abrams. And it's very sad to see it. And a secretary of state, this guy's like a hard-headed rock. He can't move. All I want to do is signature verification. Signature verification, and it's a total win. They don't want to do it. And they're Republicans. Now, what's their problem? They're stupid, okay? They're stupid people. Did you get the sense in speaking with Donald Trump that there was anything, any limit to what he would do in order to remain president, including was he willing to see violence done in order to remain president? Well, I'm not sure whether or not he sort of intended there to be violence, but he certainly said things which were quite extraordinary for a president of the United States to say. I mean, that clip just now illustrates uh, a sort of a, a moment which is, I mean, just astonishing. There I am sitting in the White House. I'm a British filmmaker. I don't really have any skin in the game politically. And he's sort of looking me in the eye. This is a diplomatic reception room. And he's a sitting president of the United States, and he's telling me that the uh, election officials in, in Georgia uh, are stupid people. So it, it was certainly the realms of possibility as to what could happen were, were cer certainly evident, for sure. And they were all Republicans. We should note uh, many of them up for re-election uh, now. But let me play another clip. This is the clip of Mike Pence um, receiving the information that there is a House vote recommending the 25th Amendment be used to remove Trump from power. Um, an extraordinary thing to, that, to, to propose. Here it is. If the vice president and cabinet do not act, the Congress may be prepared to move forward with impeachment. Oh. <clears throat> 748. That's when I received it. But the House members got it a while back. Yeah, excellent. Um, but tell Zach to print me off a hard copy for the sure. trip home. Sure. Great. I'm always hopeful about America. 
it goes right to I'm always hopeful about America. Did Trump, ha did Pence have any further reaction in front of your camera crew to that suggestion that the 25th Amendment be used? No, no. I mean, I think it was just that, that specific moment, which was pretty extraordinary to sort of capture. And yeah. I think his, uh, his reaction was, I mean, I think viewers will, will come to their own conclusion as to what he may be saying or what it implies, but it certainly was a, an extraordinary moment for sure to capture. And, and it also, that took place six days after January 6th as well, so it was a historic date in its own right. You so. also, I mean, you interviewed Trump twice after the January 6th insurrection had taken place. Did he express any remorse about the violence that took place, including the threat to lynch the man we just saw, vice, former Vice President Mike Pence? At least to me, he did not, know. no. Did you get a sense that he had any reaction, sort of normal human reaction, to the fact that that violence had taken place? In my sort of interaction with him about January 6th, he sort of doubled down on the position that it was sort of almost an expected result uh, because he believed that the election was stolen. And so those that were going into the Capitol uh, were essentially, using his words, smart. Wow. Um, cannot wait to watch this. Alex Holder, thank you very much. Really appreciate you. you being here.